was like, Lord, I know you got something in store for me today. But we got to be wanting that blessing, amen, and expecting it, expecting great things, amen. So since you all have an outline in your bulletins to follow along with me, and we're in a new sermon series, and what is the name of that sermon series? Thanksgiving. And what is the first part today? And all circumstances. Say that word with me, all, all circumstances. And so today we're kicking it off, Thanksgiving in all circumstances, and next week we will be hearing, I believe, from Pastor Rick, who's going to be talking about Thanksgiving at the second coming, and Pastor Toby's going to talk about Thanksgiving, God is doing, what is God doing? So saints, before we go one step forward, let us take a moment to pray. Gracious God, you are so awesome and amazing. And we thank you, Lord, that you provide blessings for us that we can't even imagine nor understand sometimes. We ask your blessing upon us as we enter into your word more deeply, as we are challenged by what you have for us today. Open our eyes, Lord, really wide. Open our ears clearly. And most of all, open our hearts. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. All right, saints, so we're in this series called Thanksgiving. We have a very simple exercise. You got to stand up and say one thing you're thankful for. Come on, don't look at me like that. <laughs> don't give me the evil eye. Family, life, God in my life. A good church family. Blessings. Frank. Being an overcomer, that's a nice one. Woke me up this morning. Good health. Family. Community. Michael. Family. Say it again, Hazel. Health and strength. Renee. God's grace, love, and mercy. For his love and strength. Are you over there? Say it one more time. Longevity. Oh, that's a real good one. Anyone else? Good weather. Praise God. Peace of mind. Say it again, Jim. And oh, sanity. Amen. Family and life. All right. Okay, so those of y'all that didn't stand up, put your hand up. <laughs> want us to look at y'all real good because <laughs> you said you don't have nothing to be thankful for today <laughs> and I was reading this question that said what if you woke up today with only the things that you thank God for yesterday that means if you didn't say thankful for it today tomorrow you won't have it so imagine that all y'all who didn't thank God for your life, you ain't going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> Anybody that didn't thank God for your health, plan on being sick. <laughs> Anybody, I don't think I heard the word job. That must mean we all going to get fired. <laughs> Anybody didn't thank God for their homes. Even sometimes we complain about how they broke down and raggedy. You got one. <laughs> and what if you woke up tomorrow and everything that you didn't say thank God for was gone? Would you change your attitude about saying thank you to God? <laughs> Amen. You see, even though this person who asked that question was thinking, helping us to think more deeply, saints, the reality is we do not thank God enough. We don't offer thanks to God as much as we really should. But what I'm really thankful for today is that we have this awesome God who gives us what we need, and sometimes more than what we need, even when we don't say thank you. Even when we don't give God the glory or the praise, he still gives us everything that we need. That's an amazing God, isn't it? We don't ever have to say thank you. We don't even have to sometimes acknowledge God, and yet God will still love us and provide for us. That's a great God, saints. So I'm encouraged today that all the people who never say thank you, all the people who never acknowledge God, it doesn't stop God from being God. God does not change. 
So as we start this new month of November, it's already November 2014. Can anybody that was born back in the 70s or before, can you believe it? <laughs> 2014 and the year is almost over. And we're in this new season and we're looking at Thanksgiving in a different way. And some of you may be already saying, you know what, Pastor Kelly, I'm tired and I'm a little bored and what does this have to do with me? You know, can you, can you hurry up? Anybody feeling that way? Oh, y'all won't admit it? <laughs> you better not answer your, you raise your hand. You got to go home with me. <laughs> but sometimes, saints, I've been listening to some other sermons, and a lot of the pastors have been talking about how we as Christians have become bored with our worship. We have become bored with coming to church and listening to a sermon. And one of the pastors spoke, and he said, I cannot imagine the very, very first Christians, the disciples, coming to church and saying, you know, Jesus, you was kind of boring in that message today. It was a little long-winded. I can't imagine some of the earlier Christians saying, coming to church and saying, what, what did you do for me? But here we are in our 2014 and 20, 2013, I'm sorry. <laughs> we almost there. Here we are. And we come to church, instead of with attitudes of thanksgiving that we get to worship, we come saying, what did you do for me? You did not do enough. So we're going to look at thanksgiving in new eyes today. We're going to get rid of that concept of what did you do for me or what am I supposed to get? And we're going to look at it with new eyes of what can I give today? And, and how can I thank God for what I did get? We're going to look at how to be thankful through the eyes of all circumstances. Say those words, all circumstances. You see, the Apostle Paul was saying something when he was saying, I learned to be content in all circumstances. And, and I want us to pay attention that all circumstances mean that we're thankful when someone is born. We're thankful when someone dies. We're thankful when someone is married, but we're also thankful even when they go through a divorce. We're thankful when we have money, and we're thankful when we don't have so much money. And notice, saints, that we're not necessarily thankful for the circumstance. We're thankful in the circumstance. We're not saying that God is condoning evil or hurtful things that happen in our lives. We're saying that we can be thankful in any situation or circumstance that we may find ourselves, saints. So even when we might be bored, we can be thankful. When we're well entertained, we can be thankful. When things are good in our lives, we can be thankful. When things are bad in our lives, we can be thankful. You know, saints, when I was studying through the Bible about what it means to be really thankful, I started looking at the book of Numbers. Anybody ever read the book of Numbers? Would you agree that's a hard book to read? That's one of them books you'd be like, ooh, just get through it. But most of us can't even really remember a, a particular character or a specific story from the book of Numbers. We just know it has something to do with some numbers. But we're going to try to break this down a little bit because we're going to look at these people in the book of Numbers. These were the Israelites. And, and they are going to share with us and teach us a little bit more about what it means to thank God. And here we have, I want you just to imagine this setting. Remember the story about the, the Israelites leaving Egypt? All of us know that story. You know that story. So they've left Egypt. And what happened after they left Egypt? Where did they go? To the wilderness or the desert. Thank you. So in the wilderness, did they have any food? Manna, that's right, they had the manna. They was, what, and quails. Oh, good, they must go to Bible study. Y'all need to come on to Bible study. They had the basics of sustenance, but they would complain. Remember in that story that they would complain that it was not enough. They were tired of the manna. They, they wanted more, and they, they didn't have enough water, and they complained about that. And So here they are in the wilderness, saints, and in the midst of, all of the complaining and the midst of all of the suffering that they were going through, this time happened in the book of Numbers where Moses started leading the people to this place of worship. 
If you think back, when they left Egypt, they left with jewels and gold. Remember, the Egyptians had given them everything. And so when they left, they get to the wilderness, and Moses tells them, now God has said we are to, to build the tabernacle. Remember that they started building this tabernacle and now they have invested all that they took from Egypt into building this tabernacle. And the tabernacle is built. And now Moses looks and the people are sitting back and they're probably thinking, oh, we proud of our work, that looked nice. Anybody ever worked real hard and you stood back and said, oh, that's some nice work. That's good, you feel like you worked hard or you wanna pat yourself on the back, don't you? You're so happy that you completed that task. So here Moses is, and he knows how hard the people has worked, and he knows how much they put into every portion of their work, and now he's saying, we're not finished. We got a little bit more to do. Ever felt that way? You get done and somebody tell you, we got some more to do? Some of y'all said that about us as pastors. I ain't gonna point out no names. <laughs> but I heard y'all saying, you just asked us. We tired. <laughs> and so here Moses is, looking at the people and knowing that they've done a lot of work and he's saying to them, we got some more to do. And so he gathers them because the next part of this journey, they got the tabernacle, but now they have to bless the tabernacle. They have to do this special ceremony with the Levitical priests and they have to bless the, the tabernacle where God is going to be dwelling and they got to bless the priests who are going to be caring for the people, saints. And and so here they are, I can just imagine, they're like, we, we already gave everything we had. We gave our silver, our gold, our diamonds, we gave our animals, and, and now you asking me for more? Anybody ever quite said something like that? I don't gave all I got. what I get to keep from me? So here Moses, and I'm, I'm sure as the leader, he probably was thinking, these people gonna kill me if I ask them for one more thing. But here they are, and and that they have to do this special ceremony and they have to anoint these, these new priests. And, and when they're coming along, each member, one member from each of the 12 tribes has to bring something forward representing that tribe. And, and in our number of scripture reading, scripture today, we were looking at two individuals who brought forth the offering. And one of those individuals Eliezer, he comes forth with the offering. He gives even more, but then he adds on one more offering. It's called the peace offering. The peace offering. Now, he didn't have to give this offering. This was an extra offering, and you may be wondering, what is that peace offering? Well, the peace offering is broken down to two things. The peace offering is an acknowledgement that we're going through some hard times. Life is tough. And the other side of that offering is that it's a thanks offering. So in the middle of the peace offering is the thank offering. And, and here he is, he's coming. And if you all remember from the scripture reading, he was given a lot. He was given plates and gold and all kind of stuff. And here he is giving at the hardest time of their lives. Giving during some national sorrow. They were in the midst of the wilderness. And he brings forth this thank offering. You see, saints, the thank offering isn't mentioned that many times in the Bible, but when it's mentioned, saints, it's not during a time of joy. The thank offering is mentioned during national sorrow and pain. And here they are bringing forth this thank offering. Why would you want to bring forth a, a thank offering when your life is so hard? What you got to be thankful for when your life is all messed up and difficult? But here they are bringing forth this thank offering. And that's our, our story from the Old Testament. But you, you, if you realize in the Bible, so many of the people had hard times. When we look at our New Testament reading from the book of Philippians, Paul is writing and he's writing this letter from jail. He's in jail. He's in a Roman jail. And not only is he in jail, he is physically chained to the guard. Get that, saints. You ever seen inside of a prison or a jail? It's kind of tight, ain't it? It ain't the best cleanliness. You got to use the bathroom right there with everybody else. 
And at least most prisoners, when they go to jail, they get the privacy of their cell and maybe a roommate. But here he is, he's chained to the guard. So everything he, I mean, he's eating, he gotta eat chained to the guard. He's sleeping, he's chained to the guard. He's walking, he's chained to the guard. He uses the bathroom, he's chained to the guard. What does he have to be thankful for, saints? But here he is writing this letter to the Philippians, and the Philippians letter is like the letter of thanks. He's expressing thankfulness during the hardest time of his life. Here he is saying that I'm going to trust God with my life instead of my own reasoning. And you know, saints, that's one of the hardest lessons that we as Christians sometimes have to learn. It is difficult to trust God. It's difficult to have any reasoning on why we should do the things that we should do. But the Bible tells us clearly, saints, if you read this uh, verse from Proverbs chapter 14, it says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. You see, in our world, it appears that it would be right to complain, to be negative, to, to point out all the things that are wrong with our lives. How many of you have been caught guilty of that? You, you complain about everything. Somebody do something nice, you say, well, that's nice, but... Well, that's nice, but you could have did a little bit better over there. Well, thanks for giving me some new shoes, but you could have bought me an outfit to go with it, or... Thank you for giving me some money, but it's only $5. You could have gave me 10. <laughs> it seems right for us to talk like that and to think like that and to act like that. But you see, saints, we're Christians. Tell your neighbor, you're a Christian. You're a Christian. And you see, when we as Christians, when we are not thankful, that means we are ungrateful. When we are not thankful, that means we're being complaining, we're being bitter, and we're actually going this away, far from God. And God is saying, in the midst of all circumstances, thank me. Thank me for everything. You see, if we think about it, those Israelites did a lot of complaining, and almost every commentary says maybe if they had to start thanking God instead of complaining about God, they would have got through the wilderness in less than 40 years. And you're thinking about your situation, you might be thinking, oh Lord, I'm so tired of this job, I'm so tired of my kids, I'm so tired of my family, I'm so, why don't you start thanking God? Maybe your wilderness might end, amen. You see, those Israelites, they complained about everything. They complained about their circumstances. Ever complained about your circumstances? Those of you that's in school, you complaining because you got exams coming up. And I be thinking, that's your hardest problem. I would love to have exams right now. Those of you that's at work, who, who complains about their job? Anybody? <laughs> The Israelites complained about their circumstances, but not only did they complain about their circumstances, they complained about their blessings. They complained about their blessings. God gave them the manna. They said, we don't want no manna. God gave them the quails. He said, well, can we have a little bit more? He gave them so much that some of them died. They complained about their leadership. That's a difficult one, seeing as I'm one of y'all leaders. <laughs> They complained about everything that Moses did. Saints, oh my goodness, I can't imagine what it's like for them up in heaven right now, all the complaining they did. They complained about their leadership, and how many of us are guilty about complaining about our leadership? It could be your pastors, it could be your teachers, it could be your boss. Y'all don't want to raise y'all hand for that one, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to take y'all picture. <laughs> But when we complain about our leadership, it doesn't draw us closer to God. It puts us on the edge of rebellion. 
when we complain about our circumstances and our blessing, it doesn't take us closer to God. It shows us the root of our true problem is that we are incredibly selfish. Anybody selfish today? <laughs> that is the root of thanklessness, is selfishness. And some of you may be thinking, I'm not that selfish. We all selfish. Soon as somebody get on your nerves, that's when you can tell you selfish. Anybody get on your nerves on the way in this morning? <laughs> you see, because they were doing something that messed us up. They were doing something that made us uncomfortable or doing something that necessarily held us up a little bit. I was looking at little T this morning. I was like, would you get out the bed? Every morning we go through the same routine. <laughs> I just be wanting to strangle the little child. And here I am on my way to preach about thankfulness. And I had a hard time being thankful for him this morning. I just wanted to grab him out the bed. But then I thought about this message. I was like, yep, that's that selfishness. More concerned about me than my son and my relationship. And you see, when folks is getting on our nerves, we're more concerned about us and what they're doing to us than the relationship. And it's so hard to stay thankful in the midst of hard times. But that's really when we're supposed to say thank God the most. When somebody getting on your nerves today, because I already know they're going to get on your nerves, you start to immediately say, I thank God for you. Somebody bother you, I thank God for you. And they're going to look at you real funny. But you say it anyway. I thank God for you. And then you tell them, why do you thank God? I thank God that you're alive. I thank God that you're here. I thank God that I can have a relationship with you. I thank God that you're healthy. I thank God for everything about you. And when we start thanking God, watch how it changes us. Watch the change that begins to take place in us. They not going to change. Lil T didn't get out of bed no faster. They're not going to change. But we will change because that Holy Spirit that we're connected to starts working in us like we're supposed to allow it to happen. You see, when we start thanking God and when we're very thankful, we, we start honoring God, saints. We actually recognize that God exists. You see, when you say, thank God, you're saying God. You didn't say no other name. You said, thank God. Thank you, God, for everything you do. Thank you, God, for my life. And just that simple recognition honors God and that we're dependent upon God. When we say thank you, Lord, it connects us to the Holy Spirit. That's where our power is. We know that. We say that, but we don't claim it. How do we get the Holy Spirit to always be indwelling in us? Call upon the Holy Spirit. Start thanking, start getting your praise on in the midst of trying circumstances. We are thankful, saints, because scripture commands us to be thankful. Over and over and over it says, in everything what? Give thanks. And that's not the only place the Psalms are full of thanksgiving to God. The Old Testament and the New Testament is full of how can we thank God? You see, these people in the Bible, saints, they had such difficult lives and they were so humble that all they could do is say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you spared my life. I think about David all the time. This king who committed adultery, who murdered somebody and, and he's looked upon God with favor and, and David's response was to write these psalms and said, I thank you. Why did he thank God like that? Because he knew he didn't deserve it. He didn't earn it. He couldn't do anything to get it. But God gave it to him anyway. Why are we thankful, you see, saints? If we're not thankful, we're in a dangerous land. You are in dangerous territory when you become a thankless person. It is absolutely dangerous to your life and others when you start bickering and complaining. 
You see, because when we invest those negative words into our spirit, into other people's spirit, how can we expect any joy? Paul said, rejoice. He had wrote this whole letter to the Philippians telling them how good they were and how thankful he was and how appreciative he was. And he talked to them about their hard work and even the ones that weren't doing something good necessarily. He said, try to do a little better. But he said it in such a positive manner. But saints, can you imagine if he had wrote that letter and he said, y'all getting on my nerves over there in Philippi. You all need to get your act together. I don't like how y'all leading the church over there. He wouldn't have got good results, saints. He absolutely would not have. It would have been dangerous for the ministry. You see, because all that complaining and bitterness leads to a joyless life. How many of you all want to have some joy in your life today? You see, Thanksgiving, when we thank God, it is life-changing. It is life-empowering, saints. You know what, saints, anybody ever been around somebody that's real encouraging and thankful? Anybody been around somebody like that? We all know one at least, don't we? <laughs> Do you know what it's like to be around someone who's constantly encouraging you? It's contagious. Anybody that's constantly feeding into you and saying positive things, you, you want to be around them. I love that. Every time when we're around Pastor Toby or Pastor Rick, they say, thank God, praise God. Because if they was kind of different and they never said thank God, I'd be like, okay, I got to go somewhere else. Because it's not encouraging to, to be around people who always be negative. When we're thankful, people want to be around us. People want to spend time with us. People realize that we're sincere, but not only are we sincere, we're wise. You see, a person that's thankful has gained some wisdom. Because a person that's thankful has gone through some suffering and come out on the other side, and they've gained something in that situation. And I like being around smart people who are wise, who can tell me something about my life. Anybody like being around somebody like that? You see, thankful people take us to higher planes in our lives. When they're serving God, they help us to go up a little further. They help us to dig a little deeper and grow a little wider, saints. And Paul is telling us, give thanks in all circumstances. Why? He says, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. But this last part of this passage, saints, in 1 Thessalonians, it says, do not quench the spirit. We have been guilty of quenching the spirit. When we are complaining and bitter and negative, no Holy Spirit around you, it's, but it's protecting you, it's not in you. But when we start giving our thanks and getting our praise on, the Holy Spirit just takes hold of us. And the spirit cannot be quenched, saints cannot be extin extin extinguished. So today, let us be thankful. Thankful. Thankful for everything in our lives. And as I, as I close this sermon and I, I think about our invitation, I, I give myself away. When we stand up to pray today, don't pray your normal standard prayer, Lord, forgive me for everything I did. Let that one go today. Pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, I'm so thankful for everything. And name them one by one. Because you may wake up tomorrow and it may not be there. Let us pray.